and welcome back. Today we talk about the auto boom. Uh, the auto boom is a warming box. Uh, basically, it put together a few interesting circuits and I'm using it a lot at the end of my chain, uh, mostly after my mixer or after my octatrack, to glue everything together, to give it uh, that little nice fizziness and some drive. And uh, also, it has a very nice sounding filter. So as you hear, it's very fun to play live. It's very cool because it has a mix knob, so basically what you can do can be parallel. So you can mix like your clean sound to your heavily compressed, distorts, high cutted sound, and you can get very interesting crunchy vibe here. So rather than a scientific mastering unit, uh, I find this one as a very interesting live tool where I can have a lot of hands-on uh, control and everybody knows by now, I hope that I love hands-on control. It's a uh, look cool. That's another thing that of course, <laughs> grab my high and uh, it's very simple to use. Uh, I feel that rather than using as a extremely, uh, I wouldn't say that it's a very colorful box, but I don't use like the drive circuit uh, so much. And I'll show you why. There's four different distortion in it. Uh, I end up using only the first one that is the, just the boost because I found the other three circuit to be extremely strong and uh, for the use that I do that is mostly at the end of the chain it really uh, changes sound drastically so let's uh, just do a quick description so it's a, a stereo box and it has uh, two unbalanced in and two unbalanced out on the back it has a MIDI control, it's fully MIDI uh, controllable, and it has a side chain in that it could be very interesting to creating uh, interesting pumping effect. The side chain is controlling the compressor, triggering the compressor. Then on the front we have a one knob compressor. Basically what this does, it control, depending on the position, uh, different um, different part of the compressor circuit. So let's open the manual so I can tell you exactly what it does. So it controls the threshold, the ratio, and the makeup. So basically, uh, when it's like this is one-to-one, -one, basically no compression happening. All over until the midpoint here is going to be limiting. So it's an infinite compression after the uh, threshold. So from here to here, 50%, you have all of the possible different uh, values of threshold, like his, here is 5 to 1, and here is 10 to 1. Past the midpoint, it's going to go in the negative, so basically uh, it's an overcompression that uh, will create a dynamic reversal effect, and it's very interesting. Let's, we can hear it while well, we are doing it. No, let's first do a uh, full visualization what we have here. Then we have our drive knob. Actually, I changed my mind. So, this is the clean sound, okay? As you can hear, the compression start happening. When it goes past here, is gonna have a, a reverse effect. You can see here that basically you have, here is the in, and the second line is the gain reduction, all right? That is influenced by the in gain. With this button, you decide, oh, sorry. You decide to boost the signal that come in, and this will uh, change how the compressor reacts. 
So since my uh, output is always kind of hot, I always keep it at the minimum, but the sound really changed basing on how this guy is set up and you can hear it. You hear already that uh, turning this, just the compressor on, it gives a nice gluing effect. Of course, before everybody would uh, start um, point a gun towards me, I know that the gain is not regulated. You can, of course, gain matching here, but this is by no chance a scientific review. So you take for what it is. Okay, after the compressor, we have the drive signal. Now, let's finish. The compressor, you have also the attack and release uh, here. So you can decide. Let's just use a drum to, to hear what it does. Okay, this is a 808 pattern. So if you want to change the attack of the compressor, you press here and then with the data. Right now we have the uh, slowest attack, mean that you will uh, keep my transient on. I usually keep it like this. But if we go here, you hear that now every part of the signal is being heavily compressed. And it could be interesting if you go for this kind of effect. All right. But for now, let's keep it, let's keep it at the maximum. So uh, the release, same thing. You can decide this is the uh, longest release and this is the fastest. I like to be at the second step here. On the manual, you can find uh, the precise uh, amount of that. I, of course, don't care. And this is all about the compressor. Basically, this knob control threshold ratio makeup, these two control the attack and release, and the in-gain uh, decide, change a little how the circuit will react. The last thing is that we have the side chain here. So I, with I'm sending out of my Octatrack a trigger, a kick, separate kick to trigger on the queue. So, and it's on the four on the floor. As you hear, it creates this pumping effect. This could be interesting if you want to create some weird pumping effect. If I turn on again the other instrument. So this could be interesting if you have a kick on a separate channel and then you want to drive this pumping effect that a lot of us likes because it makes you feel like you are Daft Punk. And shout out to Daft Punk that decided to end their career. Anyway, this is without. I find it funny there's not a lot of info on how it works in the manual. But that's it. It's very fun to use live. Okay, all right. Now let's go on the drive circuit. We will keep the drum going on so it's a little more easy to understand what's happening. So let's turn off our compressor. You have a four different uh, circuit. Let's check the manual. So I'll name them in the correct way. All right. So to change them, you just simply go on a distortion. So the first one is a boost. Let's hear it. So the big, big problem to me for this pedal is like the drive 
lot of gain. And of course, that is normal. What I wish is that it had a sort of auto gain that the compressor has. So, if you want to play live with this unit and you plan to play with the with the drive a lot, you need then to level ride. Or you just go with the mix, but basically, if you just raise this guy, your gain will go very, very, very high. So that's something you have to know. But if you use just a warming unit and you have, you can save preset, of course, and you kind of leave it in a certain position, you will be fine. Then uh, you have a low cut circuit that uh, happen before the drive and this could be good if you want to cut some bass frequency that would drive the uh, drive too much so if you plan to use the drive a lot I advise to use this when it's at the first position that it's a flat signal and then it start cutting the frequency as you as you can hear as you can hear the first step sounds nice with this because it cut the lowest part and uh, I think it cut at 75 Hertz then it's 150 and 300 so I cut at 75 if you put it in parallel with some compression and I like to cut to do a little high cut sounds very nice to me now of course we have a shitload of it's very hard a bit to, to manage the gain. That's the only problem to me because... Here we are. Sounds change a lot and I like it. It's interesting also with the reverse dynamic. And it's nice because you can mix the thing. So it's kind of happening in parallel. You can use a lot of compression more drive and whether you want to gain stage it or not who cares but what came out it's an interesting vibe and uh, uh, I use it again not as a uh, mastering tool but I used to fetch a kind of sound so it works perfect for my needing. Anyway, just to let you know, let's try the other uh, distortion circuit. So again, this is this is the boost. Next one, it's the tube. I will let you hear with drum and then with the melodic thing. Next one is the fuzz no actually this is the fuzz the, this is the square no i was right this is the fuzz and then the square square is complete madness it's basically a super ultimate fuzz as they say in the manual let's hear with the melodic content maybe with the 303 All right, I have to move to the other desk, so sorry for the pause. Okay, let's select the first distortion circuit that is the boost. We can hear it some compressor. having some time playing with the mix knob so I can just introduce part of the sound in parallel okay let's try the other distortion unit the tube
next one. But I find that mostly it's a very little that you can dial in without having a very severe distortion happening. But again, it can work when when you do like this. With the reverse. Let's put the side chain. Let's try with different melodic content. Side chain is happening. So, for example, I have this is the Vermona that they come uh, with just some reverb and delay of the octa track. And I did lately an album that is coming out soon and it's all extremely distorted and it's all thanks to this guy. And I like this kind of crunchiness. This is a sort of mixing the thing. Let's try with the lighter distortion. I actually use mostly the, the boost one, but I think it sounds pretty great. See from this kind of sound that it's nice, but it's, I wouldn't call it sterile, but it's just need some character. Now you have it. And I'm actually using, this would be 30%. I forgot to mention there's a gate one and you can decide how it works. I think it works with the... Uh, side chain in tandem but I'm not sure about that and it's okay we just hear what it does this could be interesting if you want to create some okay then the last part that you already hear uh, it's the high cut. I find this filter very nice. You guys might know that I have a, a play different model one that I use a lot. But since I got this guy, sometimes it's easier for me to reach to this filter rather than the one on the on the mixer. They both they sound different and they both have a different use. But I find it cool that. Uh, with just my octa track and this guy at the end of it, I can have an easy filter to reach. That sounds to me pretty great. I wish it was also a low cut, so I could have had more fun. There's no other setting for this, so it's just what it is. Forgot to mention everything is analog. So for the analog purist, you'll be happy. Let's add back the drum and stuff. So, let's get to the point of it. How can you use this guy? Uh, there's two ways for me. One would be just very subtle and it will glue all of your mix. It will add some character without adding too much. So, let's try it. 
So let's introduce some compression and let's go not too much. Again, our attack is the slowest. Let's keep it like that. Release is almost the fastest. I have the low cut at 75, but since I'm not using in parallel, I will open it up. And the distortion is on boost. Let's try to gain much. So, it's not that huge uh, difference, but there's a nice difference. Everything sounds more glued together. Now, of course, we are using only this uh, uh, beautiful track that I made, so you guys can understand. Uh, but there's, of course, some level stuff happening. And then what I like to do though, it's just play with the mix level. So it's, this box is in parallel. So this is clean signal. And you hear how now everything is glued together. It's a little more pumping. Again, let's hear with the... It's really hard, huh? add a kick outside and it would be pretty cool and uh, so this is a way the other way of course is like using as a character effect box and in that case you just need to be careful with the level Let's, let me give you another preset. I'm gonna do something different and uh, we're here again. Okay, I just created uh, another quick uh, pattern. Still the Vermona, the Tier 8 and the Avalon. So, as you hear, this is, uh, to me sounds interesting but needs some gluing because the, the, all the parts are not very integrated. So I found out with this, you will feel everything way more cohesive. Let's hear it. So in this case, I'm using this as a heavy effect box. I'm cutting the high end, I'm boosting the low frequency. I introduce a lot of harmonics. But as you can hear, this is how I like to do music. It's just not a stereo process where uh, I will think about these steps later on the computer. I want to have this uh, possibility of heavily influence my sound right away before I record. I want to commit to the sound right away because of course this to me is already in a sort of interesting dimension and it inspired me. It's far away, it's distorted, uh, it, it sounds like an old cassette or whatever and to me it's inspiring. Let's experiment more. I push the in gain and as you hear the compressor works differently. We are in the negative compression. So as you can hear, I made a um, kind of pattern that has this very squeaky high hand that in a long run would kind of annoy me. And 
like this, I manage to tame everything nicely. Again, the mix is interesting because let's see with the with the side chain the gain get a little too crazy. But anyway, this could be the start for a interesting jam. Let me change a little more. now how the eye hands get very uh, much less frizzier. If you're aesthetic like my sometimes it's the kind of crunchy lo-fi that come out of tape, old tape, this pedal get you there in a very interesting way. He feel the pumping and how already to me this sounds like something. It has a vibe. Well. Anyway. As usual, what would be the only complaint that I have on this unit? I'd say one is like it's very hard to tame the gain staging when you start playing with the drive. It goes bonkers very fast. I wish the compressor somehow was after the drive and, and it would keep the volume tamed. That would have been amazing because you could have used this box as a kind of a limiter at the end. The other things I don't like, it needs its own uh, AC. It doesn't work with the 9 uh, volt center positive, uh, center negative one that every other pedals work. So I need to, I can use my Strymon uh, box. Uh, small things, but you know, it, it's just, I hate to have so, so many AC. And I think that's it. I forgot to mention that you have preset, you have 36 preset and you just push preset, you then first line you will choose six bank, so let's say bank three, and then six preset on that bank. And that's it. You can save just pressing for more sec on that. Uh, and yeah, I feel we went through all of it. I, I really, really, really love this guy. Uh, as everything that I review, mostly are instruments that clicked with me and that I use extensively and uh, instruments that I would recommend my brother if he will ever start doing electronic music, but he would not because he has kids, so it's better to spend money on kids. I, I, I'm the, the addicted one in the family. Uh, I'd say that it's done for today. I say everything I had to say. Thanks as usual for being my trusty listeners and watchers. Hope you enjoy this uh, review and I'll see you next week. Ciao.